Back in Birmingham, not everyone was celebrating the Moody's Christmas success. Bev Bevan had once played drums in Denny Lane and the Diplomats. He found it hard now to be generous to his former colleague. I'd had to go and get myself a job just to pay the HP payments on my drums as a furniture salesman at this rather snooty store in Bir Keenan Scott in Birmingham. And um, it wasn't at all, a, I didn't go rock and roll image at all, you know. But I had to do it because I needed some money. But it, it, in my mind, it was definitely, it was not forever, it was just a part-time thing until something else came along. But I, at that Christmas, I remember Denny being, by this time I was with the Moody Blues, and he was on the, the, the Christmas top of the pops doing Go Now. And he was like, you know, it was a number one record. He got all these, all these, all the top of the pops dances and stuff around him. And I was, I was just at home. And I mean, all I got to look forward to were the January sales, you know, at the, at the store. I never thought it could happen to me, girl. Bev quit the furniture store and joined Carl Wayne and the Vikings. But it soon dawned on him that this was just another local band going nowhere. By 66, I was like 21. And we were thinking that we've actually passed it, really. You know, we're too old now to make it. We've got one last chance, really. And so Carl Wayne and myself, and Ace Kefford, who was also in, the, in Carl Wayne and the Vikings, we were sort of, we were in like secret negotiations, uh, mainly at a place called Alex's Pie Stand in Birmingham, which is a brilliant place. And he's right by the Albany Hotel. It's a load of advertising hoardings now, a little car park, but it's where all the groups met up. There were hundreds, literally hundreds of bands in Birmingham at this time. And whenever you'd played in and around Birmingham, you'd meet up at this place, Alex's Pie Stand, for a hot pie and a hot dog and a cup of tea. Ace Kefford and me, one night, were talking. We said, wouldn't it be a good idea, you know, if we got all the, the youngest guys out of each of the top bands and put them in one band? We talked to Roy about it, all in secret. He was up for the idea. And then Carl and Bev were in the Vikings with Ace. And we had a meeting at Roy's house one day. And we decided to form a band, and there was a knock on the door. And Mike Sheridan's there, whose band Roy was in at the time. What's going on here, then? with uh, Roger, his drummer. Went in the flat and Fred, his dad, hello, Roger, how you doing? Cup, cup of tea. And there sat the move, virtually, you know, all the members that were to become the move. And uh, I said, oh, hello, lads, very naive. Uh, what, what are you doing here? Oh, we've just come to listen to some of Roy's songs. Oh, great, cup of tea, coffee, and went. <laughs> Never thought about it. And Roy said, I'm leaving the group. And we were, I mean, we were just gobsmacked because he was such an integral part of our band. And um, we said, well, I, I said to him, what are you, what, what you going to do? He said, well, we're forming a new group. We formed a new group, and we're going to do that, you know? And I said, well, what's that called then? He says, The Move. And we all felt about laughing. I mean, it was, we all thought it was such a stupid name, you know, The Move. But like thinking back, I mean, it, that's what exactly what they did, The Move, it was a big move for everyone, you know, concerned. We knew as soon as we, put, we got together, the first rehearsal, we knew we were gonna make it. We knew how good it was. And knocked the shit out of everybody in town. Everybody knew. It's just a matter of time and how. While the move felt they were on the verge of great things, the Moody Blues were finding out that one hit single was not an automatic guarantee to success. Being a little bit older than me, I suppose they're a little bit more, you know, um, sensible. They thought, hey, we've got a band, we've got a name, you know, let's stick with it until, you know, make the most of what we got. I was willing to sort of sacrifice that and say, right, I'll start again if I have to, but I don't want to do this, you know. I just want to go on to bigger and better things. Um, <laughs> whether I did or not, it's, you know, <laughs> it's, it's a matter of opinion. Then he got this idea of, you know, the uh, electric band, it was called, wasn't it? He wanted to work with some violinists with pickups. But basically, he wanted his name out the front, Denny Lane and the somethings. He always was with Denny Lane and the diplomats. I don't think he enjoyed being one of the Moody Blues. Denny drifted off into solo work, leaving the Moody Blues to start all over again. In the meantime, their old manager, Tony Secunda, had taken up with the move, and as with the Moody's, he set about modelling them into pop stars. He 
it goes his gangster image to start with. He booked, you know, got us into this um, a tailor's in London. Had all the, we had all these gangster suits made, and we wanted, he wanted us to also have our hair sort of all all coming over one eye. You know, it was all very Chelsea set sort of thing. Because we were like lads from Birmingham, right? Well, what's you doing, this bloke? You know. I always found him exciting. I think you know, like Malcolm McLaren was the eighties version of Tony Secunda. And I think he's like he read Secunda's book, you know, what he did with the pistols. It was the same thing. You never knew what was gonna happen with him anywhere. You know, it could be just explode into madness at any time. And it was a British group, the Moon, who on the third night effectively closed the festival. Four days early. And it was all that, you know, as long as you could get in the tabloids every day. It was starting to happen. It'd be more than just two band with hits, you know. Yeah, the equipment packed up before we could do it all, you know, otherwise um, I think the stadium would have been full now, smoke and all that would have been blown up, you know. We're going to blow it up. <laughs> it's still wired up, so don't go up there, whatever you do. 